100 years ago, Dr. Gotthold Steiner discovered something that changed the way we look at agriculture today. The entomopathogenic nematode. And this is where I hear you think. Entomo... what? Well, this microscopic roundworm attacks their enemy by entering body cavities, infecting them with the bacteria and ultimately killing their host. But to rear these little creatures is a profession in its own right. So at Coppet we always uh, try to partner with nature. We always try to find the solutions in the nature itself by uh, developing nematodes as a biological control agent. We dug into the soil and that was also, I think, one of the first time that we thought there's more than just the plant. There's also something happening in the soil. My name is uh, Rick van der Pas. I work for 35 years at Coppert. Started as a researcher at the microbial department and I'm now working as a category lead for enabling products. Now normally nematodes, they are in the soil and they have to, they need to have a insect or a, a, a target to reproduce. So when in the early days when they want to have a mass production of nematodes, what they did, they infected insects and then collected the nematodes. That was very labor intensive, uh, low numbers. So if you have an, an artificial diet, so you can mimic an insect to produce the nematodes and you can control it, it's always better for production. About 40 years ago, Coppert became interested in nematode production. To establish a mass production system, they sought the expertise of scientist Duke van der Schaaf. He began production based on a method he learned from Professor Simons, who knew how to produce nematodes using an artificial diet, eliminating the need for actual insects in production and saving a significant amount of labor. Although this method increased the production rate, there were still some significant challenges. If you do a mass production and there is a different bacteria or a mold or whatever also in your production uh, diet, it takes over the whole production. We had a lot of failures at the time and uh, due to the failures there was a pause in between the production. However, Coppert never gives up easily. The research department collaborated with the University of Applied Sciences in Friesland and worked with scientists Paula Westerman and Kirsten Young. The new approach involved breeding nematodes with a single beneficial bacterium in a completely sterile environment based on the knowledge shared by the two scientists. Yeah, it looked better, but still we were thinking if this is the way to upscale the production, we need higher numbers. The numbers that you can get from a solid state fermentation are not that bad. They're better than producing on insects. And you needed a huge space for, to get good numbers. And it was a lot of labor intensive. So we were looking for different manners to produce nematodes. And one of them is a liquid state fermentation. And that can give you a real boost in uh, production and in numbers. There are different nematodes. One of them, they, they form hermaphrodites. So they, they don't need male and female, they can reproduce themselves, just like snails. Uh, but some are, are, need males and females. Now you put them in a vessel or you shake them and they have to find each other. So that was a real challenge. How hard do we need to stir? How many air do we need to use for aeration? So that was a lot of trial and error. The first start was only about 50 milliliters. Then we transferred that to a 10 liter uh, fermenter and then we changed to 100 liter uh, from the 100 we went to 200 400 and then we gave, ended up with the with the gin vessel and that was a couple of thousands and for us that was a major breakthrough that was the start of everything the production now is at such a level that we can produce large scale and we can apply a large amount of nematodes to control insect pests now we can control pests in the soil that normally could not be controlled. We now can even control some pests that are on leaves that could not be controlled anymore. It definitely was a game changer. Game changers they are indeed, as we keep discovering more uses for these small natural helpers, from indoor to outdoor and from soil to foliar. As we'll discuss in the next episode, the possibilities seem endless. If the myself of 2002 would be told where we would be today, uh, I would have been really surprised. Because 
first nematodes were developed for uh, protected crops, greenhouse, greenhouse crop for scarab flies and, and mushroom industry. So very tiny, uh, tiny markets. Nowadays, we, we, are, we are developing them in many, many markets. And, and the reason is they are very uh, versatile in terms of targets. They can kill, uh, like if you take Stan and Macapo Capse, this nematode specifically can kill over 250 insects. The fact that they are so generalistic helped them to reach uh, a lot of diversified markets, from greenhouse to nowadays uh, raw crop in Brazil. So that's, uh, that's incredible.